welcome to the fifth lecture that is instruction set architecture. Here we are looking into a computer system uh, into programmers point of view like the assembly programmer that what as an assembly programmer we will have the view of the computer system. So, this instruction set architecture serves as an interface between the software and the hardware. Here by hardware we mean the processor system like we need to know that in the processor what all registers we have and those registers supports what kind of features what kind of features are supported by those registers. Typically consist of information regarding programmers view of the architectures that is as I said the registers, address and data buses etcetera and it also consists of the instruction set. Now many instruction set architectures are not specific to a particular computer architecture and they survive across generation. Like if you uh, see Intel x86 series, uh, it, 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 it across uh, architecture it has, uh, it has got no change. So, they survive across the generations. So, the various generation that they have developed they survived with that. Now, let us see what are the important instruction set design issues that should be taken into consideration. First is number of explicit operands, by operands what do you mean? Let us say we have, I have an instruction add, add in is an instruction and add R 1. I have another instruction add R 1 comma R 2. I have another instruction add R 1 comma R 2 comma R 3. By number of explicit operands here we have a single operand specified in this particular instruction. Here we have two operands specified in this particular instruction and here we have three. And if we have something where we do not specify any operand, then there is no operand specified and we explicitly take some operands for this operation, we will also see that. So, there can be 0 address instruction, there can be 1 address instruction there can be 2 address instruction or there can be 3 address instruction. Location of operands, now see by location of operand what do we mean by that? Add R 1 comma L O C A, R 1 is a processor register, so this is within processor location A is a location in memory. So, this is an operand which is present in memory and not in processor register. So, by location of the operands we mean either it is in a register or it is in accumulator or it is in memory. So, it can be either in registers or in accumulator or in memory. We will see what is an accumulator in course of time. Now, specification of operant location as I said just now that uh, like add R 1 that means, whether this operant is a register or a memory location that a computer will never understand, computer is a layman. So, 
you have to specify to the computer that okay, your first operand is a register. So, you have to look into a register to get the value. So, this will be an register address where you have to go and see the value. Now, LOCA, you have to specify that this is a memory location and you have to go to that memory location to access this value. So, by addressing modes is the way to specify the operands in your instruction. So, how the operands that is R 1 and location A specified in, in this particular instruction is addressing mode and there can be various addressing modes like register, immediate, indirect, relative etcetera. We will see in detail later. Now, size of the operands supported, it can be a byte, it can be half word, it can be a word, it can be a double etcetera and supported operation. By supported operation, we mean that how many operation you want to specify and what kind of operation. An operation can be of various types. When I say add, mul, sub, these are all arithmetic operation. I can also tell you some other operations like move, these are data transfer operation, load store, these are data transfer operations and there can be many other various kinds of operation that we will see, but by supported operation we mean that how many kinds of operation you are supporting in your architecture. Now, this actually shows uh, that evolution of instruction set. Initially in 1960s, we were having accumulator based system. By accumulator based system, let me tell what it is. Uh, when I write add R 1, By this, R 1 will be added with what? R 1 will be added with a register present in your processor called accumulator. So, accumulator is a register which if we have an instruction like add R 1, by default the value of R 1 is added with accumulator and the result is stored back in accumulator itself. So, accumulator based accumulator based machines were there in 1960s. So, this is an accumulator based instruction where add x is written just now what I said the content of accumulator will be added with the content of location specified by x and the result will be stored in accumulator. In 1960s to 70s, another kind of instruction set emerged that is stack based. What do you mean by stack based? Stack based is a kind of this, you have a portion of memory called stack, this is your and this is your top of the stack and let us say some data are stored here one by one. If you just say add and you do not specify any operand here, then by default the first two elements of the stack will be taken out that is 5 and 10 will be added and will be stored back here. So, this becomes 15. 
by this what we mean is that we are doing some operation where we are loading the data, we are storing the data in the stack and then we are performing the operation, where we need not have to specify any operand. By default, the operands are taken from the stack. So, here it is a 0 address instruction, where the top in the top of the stack we store the top of the stack plus the next we add those and we keep it in top of the stack. Next comes memory, memory based in 70s and 80s and the representative system is IBM 360, which, ha which has both 2 address and 3 address instructions add a comma b, where the data from memory location a is added with data from memory location b and the result is stored back in a. Similarly, a 3 address instruction, where a and b are added and stored back in memory location a. Now, we also have register memory based systems instruction set. By register memory based system means one operand will be your register and one operand will be your memory location. So, here load r 1 comma x what do you mean by that? Load from x load from memory location pointed by x into r 1. Similarly, we can also have store store the value of r 3 into some other location. And finally, we have 3 address instructions, where we are specifying 3 addresses and what does it do? Here r 1 stores the value of r 2 and r 3, the result after addition is stored in r 1. So, in a single step we can do this. Now, let us see some example code sequence for executing some sample instruction that is z equals to x plus y using the various instruction set architecture that I have told in the previous slide. So, let us consider this stack based machine. So, we have to perform this task z equals to x plus y. So, first we have to push x, next we have to push y and then both of these are now in stack top 2 position of the stack. When we perform this add, then these 2 values are taken out, added and store back in the top of the stack. And finally, when we do pop, then the value from top of the stack is taken out and stored back in z. So, let me explain here in this way. So, by push x, x is added here, push y, y is added here and then once we perform add x plus y is added and stored back here and then when we perform pop x, then x is a memory location where we will add sorry z pop z, z is a memory location where we will take out the result of x plus y and store it in z. Next see an accumulator based system. In an accumulator based system you have to if you have to perform the same operation z equals to x plus y, then what you have to do? Both x and y are some values in stored in memory. You have to load x. So, whatever value is in x will be loaded and will be stored in 
accumulator load x will load the value of location x and will store in accumulator and then add y will actually add the content of location y with accumulator and stored back in accumulator. So, we can see in the ALU one value is coming from the accumulator and another is coming from memory. We are adding these two values and we are storing back the result back in accumulator. So, all instructions assume that one of the operand and also the result is in a special register as I said called accumulator. Next you see register memory machine. In register memory machine how this can be performed. So, we have a register and from memory some data are loaded, some data are loaded. Load R 2 comma x what it will do from R from x location x the data of location x will be loaded in R 2. When we do add R 2 comma y in R 2 the content of R 2 which was which was nothing but x will be added with y whatever value pointed by this location y will be added and stored back in R 2 and finally, we have to store this result R 2 in z. So, we store this result R 2 in z. So, here one of the operand is assumed to be in register and another in memory. So, that is why this is your ALU. One of the operand is your register. So, value is coming from register. Another is coming from your memory and then finally, the result is getting stored here in some register and finally, the store will store back the result in some memory location. Now, we see register register machine. So, in register register machine what you need to do is that you have to load everything into some registers first. So, here instead of doing add operation or any kind of operation if you want to perform, you have to perform only on registers and not on any memory location. That is why in register register machine, you have to first load all the values of the locations memory location into some register. That is why we are using two back to back load. In the first load value of x will be loaded in R 1 and next the value of y will be loaded in R 2. So, now both my x and y value are loaded in two registers and now I will add these two registers and store the value in R 3. Now, finally, I have to store the result in z. So, R 3 will be stored in z. This kind of architecture is also called load store architecture. By load store architecture, we mean that only these two instructions load and store will be used to access the memory. No other instructions will be used to access the memory. Earlier what we have seen, if you, if you recall, we have been using instruction like this. Let us say add r 1 comma a where a is a memory location. So, in this instruction you are allowing one register operation and one memory operation, but in load store architecture what will happen? You cannot access this. So, what you have to do? You have to load a. So, load r 1 comma a. So, in r 1 let us say or let us say r 2 comma a. So, in r 2 you have loaded the content of location a and then you can do add r 1 comma r 2, but you cannot do add r 1 comma a in load store architecture. In load store 
only you can use load and store store to access memory this is a memory this is a memory so you can only access load store instruction to access memory let us see about the general purpose registers so if you if you recall older architectures have large number of special purpose register like we talked about program counter stack pointer some index register flag registers were also present accumulator we have been talking but in newer architectures we have more number of gprs that is general purpose registers and instead of having special purpose register most of the operations are performed using general purpose registers and why that is so so the compiler have can assign some variables to registers so there are so many variables that can be used and they can be assigned it to registers and registers are much faster than memory so once you load the data into the registers and you are performing operation within the register it will be much faster but once you have to load the data from your memory to register and then only you can perform the operation within register more compact instruction encoding as fewer bits are required to specify register so the instruction encoding can be much less why they are saying like so you are bringing everything into registers and the registers cannot be unlimited as compared to the memory addresses memory addresses a 32 bit memory addresses will have 32 bit but if you have 40 register or 100 registers how many bits do you require for 100 register you will require a maximum of 7 bits to encode that so that is what it means that more compact instruction encoding can be performed as fewer bits are required to specify registers so many processors have 32 or more general purpose registers now coming to comparison between various architectural types so as i have discussed about uh, many machines stack based accumulator based register 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 memory now let us do a comparison and figure out that uh, which one is better than the other firstly we will do that with the example so we will be executing this particular instruction this particular instruction will be executed and we will see that with various architectures how many steps it takes to execute this particular instruction for stack based what you have to do so these are all memory location data so what we need to do so we have to first push a because we need to put this values into stack and then only we can perform the operation then we have to push b then we can specify the operation div that will perform that particular operation and store back in the stack next we will do push a push c and push b we have pushed first a then b then c then b why we have done so just see we have performed this operation now we have to perform this operation for doing this operation we will first perform c into b and then a that is why we have first put a and then we have put c and b now when we do the next operation mul then what will happen b and c will be added multiplied and it will be stored back and now if we do a sub then a minus b into c will happen so we will get this particular value a minus b into c this has performed so we have performed this part we have already performed this part earlier which is stored in the stack now if we just perform a sub again then what will happen a by b minus a minus b into c will take place so now in my stack 
we have a by b minus a minus b into c this particular operation. But finally, we have to store this into a memory location y. So, we are storing this into y by doing a pop. So, pop will take out the result from top of the stack and put the result into y. So, how many steps basically we took to execute this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So, we took 10 steps. Next, we see accumulator architecture. In an accumulator architecture, the typical instructions that we will be using is load store and of course, along with that we can use other memory operation along with add. So, first we load C, then we mul B. So, B is multiplied with C and stored in the accumulator, but we have to store back the result somewhere because later we will be again using it. So, we store the result in D. Then we load A again, then we sub D and we store D. So, the operation A minus C into B is performed and it is stored in D. Now, finally, what we have to do? We have to perform this and we have to subtract this from this. So, then again we load A and div B, this will make A divided by B and it is stored in accumulator and then we do sub D. So, whatever is in D will be subtracted from whatever was in accumulator. So, what was in accumulator was A by B and then it gets subtracted and finally, we store the result in y. So, whatever was in accumulator is the result of this we store back in y. And now, let us see how many steps we require to execute this. So, we require 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So, we require 10 steps. Let us see memory, memory architecture. So, the typical instruction, three instruction in are add x, y, z, sub, we can have this. So, if we can have this, then what we are doing? We are doing dividing a comma b and storing in d. Then we are doing c into b, storing it in e then we are subtracting a and e and then we are storing back in e and finally, we are a and b are divided. So, the, there is a little wrong. So, this div will be d comma. So, just we this div will be d comma a by b. So, d contains a divided by b. Then we do mul, mul we are doing c comma b. So, e will have c into b and finally, we do sub e comma a comma e that means, whatever is in we are subtracting uh, we are storing it in e comma a minus e that is a minus this c into b. So, basically it will be d minus e that we will be storing and so, we have calculated the first part and finally, an a by b was there in d. So, finally, we do sub y comma d comma e, where d is a by b minus we do this part. So, it is basically a minus c into b. So, here to look into how many steps do we require to handle this? We require 
1, 2, 3 and 4 steps. Now, typical instruction if it is too operant, then how much steps it would have been required. So, move d comma a. So, first we are moving d to a, then we are dividing it that is d equals to a by b, we are dividing storing back in d. Again we are moving c to e and then we are multiplying c and b storing back in e and then we are dividing sub a comma e and finally, we are doing sub d comma a. So, the idea of showing one instruction and different operand is that you see the same instruction is requiring 4 steps to execute here and the same operation is requiring 6 steps to execute here, but in this where it is requiring 4 steps we must clearly see that there are 3 operands and 3 operands are memory operand. So, how many memory operation we have to perform to execute this particular instruction? First we need to fetch this instruction, next we need to fetch a, we need to fetch b and finally, we are also storing back the result in d same way we are doing it here, here. So, total 4 memory operations are required here and here how many memory operation required? 1 to fetch this instruction and 2 more to get the data from here and depending on the instruction what we are doing those many instruction. For writing it back into memory location we require 1 more. So, the idea here is that Although the number of instructions required is less, but maybe in turn it depends on the number of memory operation that you are performing to execute an instruction. Next is load store. In load store instruction only as I said the, uh, the instruction that will is required to access the memory is load and store. So, first of all we have 3 operands that is A, B and C, we will load that into 3 different registers, first load A into R 1, load B into R 2 and load C into R 3. Finally, we do div where we divide A by B and we store it in R 4, then we mull B and C that is R 2 and R 3 store it in R 5, then we sub R 1 and R 1 minus R 5 and store the result back in R 5. So, we got this one and finally, we sub R 4 where we have stored R A divided by B R 4 comma R, R 5. So, it will subtract R 4 minus R 5 and store back in R 4. So, finally, the result is stored in R 4 which I have to store in y location. So, from R 4 it will be transferred to y. See this load 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 and store are the 4 memory operation that we are performing and all others are loading these instruction will be from memory, but inside we are only performing register operations which will be much much faster that we will be seeing that how it is faster in later course of time. So, what are the pros and cons that we see? So, the load store architecture forms the basis of risk instruction set architecture, reduced instruction set computing, instruction set architecture and in this course we shall explore one such risk ISA that is MIPS. What it does? It helps in reducing the memory traffic once the memory data are loaded into registers. As you have seen that uh, if only load and store instructions are used to access memory, then we can load the data in a go using number of load operations 
and then we perform all the operations within processor. So, the processor will be performing all the operations with some register values, because we have already loaded those data from your memory into the register. And then finally, if I have to store again back to register uh, to some memory location, I will be storing it back to some memory location. So, compiler once knows this can of course, generate very efficient code and additional overhead for save and restore during procedure or interrupt calls and return will be there, because now we have many registers to save and restore, but again save and restore will be much more, uh, it would not be so much uh, uh, like what I wanted to say is that it is of course, an additional overhead for saving and restoring during procedure call, because you have to save the data and store, but this can be done in an efficient way, if we can store it in some other registers as well, but although this is an overhead that we see. So, these are the pros and cons of registers. So, by this we came to the end of lecture 5 and we also came to the end of week 1 lecture. So, a, to summarize what we have studied in week 1, we started with how computer has evolved, then we have seen that how an instruction can get executed. So, uh, to execute an instruction, uh, we perform set of steps, instructions data are stored in memory, to execute it we have to bring it from memory to processor execute it and store it back. We have also seen that what kind of softwares are existing like application software and uh, system softwares. We have also seen that uh, both von Neumann architecture and Howard architecture are required and uh, in the last lecture we have seen that how this instruction set architectures has evolved, what kind of machines were in use uh, early stages accumulator based machine, then uh, stack based machine, then finally, how we are now in a stage where we perform some kind of operation faster. So, our thrust is how we can execute programs faster. So, in this course in the next lecture, we will be seeing that how these concepts can be further used to enhance the speed of a computer. Thank you.